to share about my experience in fighting the corruptions. Uh, well, this is my fifth turn in the State Assembly. Uh, when I first joined the Assembly 18 years ago, uh, we, have, uh, we have giant in the Assembly. And during that time, uh, now he's our comrade. And those days he was uh, in Amno, and he was a strong man then, that is uh, Muhammad Tai. That was the, my first Menteri Besar. And I always remind our present Menteri Besar, uh, no Menteri Besar can last two terms when I'm around. It happened. So when, when Motai was the M Menteri Besar, when I joined the Assembly in 1995, uh, then something happened in 96, when he was caught carrying cash uh, in Brisbane, Australia. And nothing happened, I remember. It, it happened uh, sometime December 1996. And of course, there are hoo-ha in the newspaper, there, but thereafter, nothing has happened until April in 1997, when I tabled a motion of non confidence against him in the State Assembly. And just before the motion was supposed to be tabled on Monday of the sitting, on that very morning, Muhammad Taib announced that he resigned. That, that was my first success uh, in exposing or in making sure that a corrupt uh, politician will have to leave the office. That was the first one. Then his successor was the then Mr. Clean, uh, Tan Sri Abu Hassan Omar. And he was uh, known, well known as Mr. Clean. But not too long after he took office, I exposed a scandal whereby we found that he has actually spent five million ringgit to repair or to, to renovate his official residence. And mind you, that was in 1997. Five million was a big sum then. So he suffered the first dent. Uh, thereafter, we discovered that he also spent uh, our public fund to stay in hotel during the period when his officer residence was under renovation. He spent about 77000 for that. Uh, that was you know, further than the second blow. Uh, but after that, he resigned in 99. Uh, mysteriously, we don't know what actually happened, but that was the uh, second MB during my time will have to leave office. Then come our strong man again, Mr. K. Toyo. So, Mr. K. Toyo, you know about all his story. Uh, the latest was that uh, he's going to, uh, very soon, he's going to move to Sungai Bulo, pending his appeal in a federal court. Uh, that was the, what happened uh, during the period when I was the opposition member in the House. So, when it comes to the fourth term, Pakatria become the government and I have actually, I found that it is actually more difficult to make sure that the government is clean when we are the government. Fighting as opposition is very much easier. Fighting corruptions against, fighting corruptions against the government of the day is very much easier. I will always prefer doing the job like uh, Sivaraza is doing, like Nuru Iza is doing, it's very much easier. We just have to get together enough information and expose it. But to keep ourselves clean, that is very, very difficult. That is very difficult. So we have to start from creating a system, a new system to make sure that we are different. We are a different government from the previous government. But you have to make sure that you are in the, in the right position to do that. And every one of you, every, actually every one of us, whether we are in the opposition or we are in the government or we stay as NGO or we stay as ordinary citizen, every one of us has a part to do. Because a lot of time I found that we as ordinary citizens will actually, will actually encourage the politicians to be corrupt. I've been, I never have so many visitors after coming into power. In my first term, 
very few people come to visit me because as a speaker, it's powerless. No people will look for powerless people to do something. But now, hardly two months, I took office as exco. Uh, almost every day, I think every day I will have average of one or two visitors a day, uh, coming with uh, different intention, different purposes, asking for business, asking for opportunity, asking for job. And a lot of them claim to be our strong supporter. Uh, this, is, this has put us in a very difficult position. We need, if we want the government to stay clean, then we have to make sure that we have a part to play, to make sure that we also play our part, to make sure that the politician will not become corrupt because of our demand, because of our wish. Uh, this part is very difficult. Now, come back to creating a system. What I've done is to make sure that the government of the day, the executive, is answerable, is transparent. We actually had a discussion and we said to come up with this idea of creating in the legislature itself, creating more committees to oversee the administration of government. And therefore, we come with the idea of setting up more committees in Slango. We had, beside the usual, the PAC, the Public Accounts Committee, we have a special committee to look after our local governments. We have committees to look after our land office. We have committees to look after our GLCs. And on top of that, we have actually uh, created a history by creating a committee called CELCAT, Special Select Committees on Competency, Accountability and Transparencies, which has the power to conduct public hearing, to examine all the witnesses, to examine all the officers and our, even our ex schools. And the only thing that we haven't done is to summon the Menteri Besar to give accounts of what he has done in his office. Uh, this, this one, I think soon we will get it done. But at least what we have done is that we make sure that we, we have done is to create history, we created history. We became the first legislature in this country that has a public hearing to integrate. I wouldn't use the word integrate, actually it sounds very negative. But we have this public hearing to make sure that the government of the day, the executive, is answerable to the people through our special select committee in the legislature. And so far, no one has been able to do, to do so, to follow suit in Malaysia. Slango remain the top of the list in making sure that our legislature functions to scrutinize the administration of the day. And I believe my successor, Hannah Yeo, will do a good job in this. We have a team of, uh, a team of uh, assemblymen and assemblywomen. Well, so Hannah Yeo is one of them. We have uh, assemblymen like Sa'ari Songgeb, we have Ng Sui Lim, who has actually proven themselves in making sure that the legislature works. And this is what we have done so far. Now, coming back to, again to my, my, my own office now. Now I'm in, charging, uh, I'm in charge of the local government and everyone of us know that this is the front line service and this is a tougher job in all the portfolio. We have slang on, we have 12 local governments and all complaints against the governments are against the local governments. So I'm doing a tough job now. I enjoy five years as speakers and now I'm doing the toughest job. I think it should be the other way around. But too bad. I think our job. But the same principle apart applies. We have to clean up the system and therefore we have to create a system. We have to create something new. We have to create a new culture, a new working culture in the administrations. So first thing, what I've done is I have to come up with a plan, a five-year working plan, to make sure that all the PBTs, all the local governments will work together to improve their work and at the same time to improve their image. The first thing I emphasize to our local governments is that 
we have to come back to our core business. The cleaning, the garbage collections, building our roads. These are the core business that most of the time has been neglected. And therefore, we have to come back. We have to come back to core business right, to make sure that our service will improve. We say we cut down. We will cut down on our contractors. We will do, do more in-house. We will get more in our own workers to do all the services in-house. Like those days. I remember those days, all the works were done by our in-house workers. Now we have to go back to the basic. When the local government is supposed to provide service, then they should do it on their own and not relying on contractors. And those days we know they create a lot of contractors because contractors are our supporters, so we give business to them. Now, no, now we are saying that we are going to change the system, go back to the basic, go back to the right way, do the right thing now. Now we want to do more works in-house. And this part is not easy because we have a lot of contracts around. And do you know that in Sha'alam, in Subang Jaya, 90% of the, the work is done by contractors. And now we are going to we set a target. 30% of the works will be done in-house in the first two years. And after that, we will have to increase that to 50%. And this is uh, it's actually very tough. We need everyone's support to give this a trial. And I believe, and what we have learned from Penang is that this will work. And meanwhile, uh, it's July now. I forgot, forgot the month. Next month, by end of next month, we want the eight local governments. We have 12 here, but we have two... Uh, Bandaraya and eight uh, perbandaran. By end of next year, the monthly meeting, the full board meeting of our local governments will be live telecast through internet. This will be the first one in Malaysia. And besides, all the minutes of the meeting of the full board will have to be published in the website so everyone now have a chance to look at the minutes and see what our local government has done for us every month now, of course i would not say that there's no re resistance therefore we need your support we need the ngos to keep an eye on our local governments to help us to make sure that all this will be done and also to make sure that we have a better team to make sure that we can get the right person to do the job we are going to create we are actually engaging consultant to create a new system where our officers or where our head of departments will be on contract they will be contract officers we will, we will give them better pay but we make sure that we get the competent people we get the right people to do the job and this is something that we have learned uh, from australia where the officers, the CEO of the local governments are all contract officers. They will be better paid, but we will make sure that they do a better job. This is what we have to do. And during my visit, I have uh, today, I visit, uh, this is the, we have 12 local council. Now I visited nine of them. I want to complete by next month. So to every mayors and to every officers that attends the meetings and to all the ugly monthlies, there's our councillors, I told them that we must have a new culture of working in the local governments. I told them my policy is I will take note of what is happening at the local council by, but I will not interfere in the day-to-day in the -day running of the local councils. So no more calls for me, no more instructions for me, to approve or disapprove an application for license or business or anything. I said, you do your job, I do my job. I will create a good policies for you to work on, you carry out the policies. But unfortunately, as I said, people come to see me asking for favour. Your application has been stuck. Can you please give a call to the YDP? The officer is not cooperating. Can you please take action against the officers? These are the common demands. And I receive emails every day from resident association asking, you know, asking me to interfere so that things can be done. But my stand has been, 
we have to do everything by procedures. Follow the book, go by the book. And this is the new culture we're going to create to make sure that everyone, every officers, every workers in the councils, even our Angli Majlis, follow the book. And please don't ask for contract for our supporters, for our friends, for our neighbours. And this part is the most, most difficult part to do. To fight against the corrupt people is easy. To keep ourselves free from corruption, that is very difficult. So, time's up. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I have for you. Hopefully, next time when I speak to you here again, we can proudly say that slang or local government has changed. Because under PR government, we have the political will, we have the determination to do so. Thank you and good night.